All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to start to get into the database. Now, like I said, we're using MySQL, and I'm using something called XAMPP, which gives us an Apache server, MySQL, and PHP on a local machine. Okay, so if you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, you can use XAMPP. You can see it's cross-platform. I'm not going to go through the installation. It's really easy. Just download it, install it. Um, if you don't want to use XAMPP, you could use just, you know, a, a standalone MySQL server. You could use, uh, if you're on Linux and you have a LAMP stack, you could use that. You could use MAMP or WAMP or any of the other AMPs that are out there, as long as you have MySQL. Now, XAMPP or, or ZAMP, however you want to pronounce it, also comes with phpMyAdmin. So you can just go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin and you can see all your databases you can create a database so all we need to do here is create a database so I'm gonna create one called Adonis uh, let's say Adonis 40 blog okay so now we have an empty database and that's all I'm gonna do for now we're not gonna create our tables through here because we're using database migrations through the framework alright now before we can do anything else we need to install the uh, MySQL driver for Node.js. So we're going to say npm install MySQL. All right, so now that that's installed, we're going to go to our .env file, which is in the root. And we're going to change the DB connection from SQLite to MySQL. Okay, and then we want to go down to the user. Now, my user actually is root, so I don't need to change this, but make sure yours matches whatever your database user is. I'm going to put in my password and then the name of the database, which I called Adonis40 blog. Okay, so I'll save that, and now we should be all hooked up with MySQL. So now what we need to do is create a migration. Okay, so to do that, we can use the CLI. We can say Adonis make colon migration, and we're going to call this posts. Now it's going to ask us if we want to create a table or select a table. We're going we're to choose create. And now it created this file, this long number here, underscore post schema dot JS. And this is in our database folder, migrations, and you can see, oh, it's not there. Do I have to reload? Okay, I just had to reload. So if we enter that file, you can see that there's an up and down function. The up is going to create the post table for us. It's going to create the ID field, which is auto increment, and it's going to create a couple timestamp fields, which would be created at and updated at. Now, in addition to this, we want a title and a body for the posts. So we're going to go ahead and add in here table.string title. Okay, we also want table.string body. And that's it. That'll add those two fields. So let's save this. Now, just creating the file doesn't do anything. We need to actually run the migration, and we do that by saying Adonis migration colon run. Now what this did is it ran all three of the migrations inside of that folder. Okay, you can see down here. And it should have created all those tables. So let's go back, let's go to phpMyAdmin just to check things out and we'll reload and go to our Adonis 4.0 blog. And you can see that now we have all these tables. Okay, we also have a schema table which shows us the, all the migrations. So we want to go into posts and go to structure and you can see that we have our title and body fields that we added here along with the ID and the timestamps. So what I want to do now is I want to add some initial data to work with. So I'm just going to go to insert and you can use your, your SQL shell if you want or any other program you use. And we're just going to add a title of post one. We'll say this is post one. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we'll say post two. This is post two. All right. So we'll click go. And now we just have some sample data to work with. So we have our database table, we have our fields. Now what we need is a model because we still don't have a model. 
So we're going to go down to our command line down here and say Adonis make model post. Okay, now look, a common convention is to make your model singular and your controllers plural. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see if we go in our app folder, we have models and then a post.js file. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not going to have to do anything in here because we're extending the, the core model class. And that's where all the, the, the methods that we need are. That's where the save method is, um, you know, the remove, find, everything we need is inside of this class. Okay, so let's close that up. Let's close our schema up. And then let's go back to our controller. Now, before we can use the model, we have to bring it in. So let's go up top here and say bring in model and we'll say const post. And we're going to set this to use. And then in here we're going to put in app slash models slash post. Now notice the syntax use. Basically what we're doing here is we're using a namespace, okay? Just like Laravel. Now, the reason we're able to do this is because the app folder is auto-loaded. So we we don't have to do require dot dot slash dot dot slash models and all that stuff like we would with most frameworks. We can use this nice clean syntax to bring things in. All right, so now that we brought that in, let's comment out all this hard-coded data. And let's create a variable called posts and then we want to set this equal to await okay we're using async await and then post which is the name of the model and then we want to call not find all so this will get all of our posts all right now we want to pass it in just like we were now there's one thing we need to add here we need to just add a method onto this post object or this post array which is to json All right. Otherwise, we're just going to get undefined for everything. So let's go ahead and save that. And then we'll go to our application and reload. And now you can see we're getting post one and post two. And these are coming from our database. All right. One thing I wanted to do, I forgot to do, is to add some styling to our list. So let's go to posts index and just add a class to the UL of list group. And then let's add a class to the li of list group item. And this is just bootstrap classes. Reload, and that looks a little better. All right, so now we're pulling data from the database. So let's create a details page so we can click on one of these and it takes us to another page that has the title and the body. All right, and then of course you could add more fields if you want, but this is just going to be a basic application. Now I'm going to wrap this post.title inside the index in a link. All right, and it's going to go to slash posts slash, and then we want to put our double curly braces in here. Oops. And say post.id. All right, and then we just want to end that a tag after the title. and save. Now if we go to this now, we're going to get an error because we didn't create the route, we didn't create anything yet. So, I just wanted to add that in there. So we can close that up. And now what we'll do is create a details method inside of our post controller. So let's go under the index and let's say async details. All right, now for details we need to pass in two things here okay we need our view because we're going to load a view but we also need params because we're going to be passing in a parameter all right now actually you know what i'm not going to continue with this just yet i want to create the actual uh route first so let's save this as it is and go to our route so let's see i want to go to start routes.js and let's say route.get we want to get slash posts slash colon id and we want to map that to post controller dot details 
All right, so let's save that and then we'll go back to our details method. So in this method, we need to just fetch a single post. So we're going to say const post, set it to await, and then post. And instead of all, we're going to use dot find, no semicolons. And then I'm going to pass in params dot ID. All right, so this is how we can get the actual ID from the from the URL. Actually, let me stop that. All right, and then down here, what we want to do is return a view. And we want the post dot details view, which we haven't created yet. And then we want to pass in that single post. All right, so we'll save that. And now let's create that view. So we'll say Adonis make view. And we're going to call it uh, details uh, posts slash details. All right, so now we'll go to our details dot edge. We're going to extend the main layout. Put in our section content. And then in here, I'm going to first just put a, a link in here that's going to go to slash posts and this is going to be a go back link. All right, just to go back to the main page, then we'll put a HR and then an H1 with the post title. All right, and then under that we'll have a paragraph with the post body. All right, so let's save that. Let's reload and click on post one missing view cannot render post details dot edge um, po post details. Oh, this should be posts with an S. All right, let's try that. There we go. Post one. So if we go back post two, good. So now we have a details page. Now, what I want to do before we end this video is just create the add post page. OK, uh, in the next video, we'll do the, the functionality where we can actually create the post. But let's add the form. So we're going to create another method under details. Called add. And then this is just going to load a view. So we need to pass in our curly braces here and view. And then just return view dot render and we're going to pass in here post dot add. All right, so let's create that view. We'll say Adonis make view at uh, posts slash add. OK, and then we need the route, so we'll go to our routes JS file. Now, one thing I want to mention that's very important is if we're adding post slash something like post slash add, make sure you put it above this or else it's going to look at that slash add as an ID. It's going to look at add as an ID. So make sure you put it above that. OK, are you going to get so you're going to get issues? It's going to load the details view. So let's say route dot get. Slash post slash add. And we want that to map to post controller dot add. OK, so now uh, let's see, you know what I want to do is add a link to the main nav to create a post. So we'll go to our navbar dot edge file, copy this list item. Let's say add post. And it's going to go to post slash add. All right, so let's reload. Now we should have a add post. Click that. It goes to the view, but there's nothing in the view. So let's go to views, posts, and then add dot edge. So let's create a quick form here. We'll say at layout main section content. All right, and then in here, let's put a back button. Oops. So 
So to go to slash posts, we'll put an H1 and we'll say add post. And then under that, we'll put a form. Action is going to be slash posts. All right, we want to make sure that it's a method of post. Actually, we'll put that in caps. Okay, and then inside here, now we with Adonis, we have auto um, cross site forgery protection by simply putting in CSR, uh, CSRF field like that. And that will protect us from cross site forgeries. So let's continue with our form. Now in Bootstrap, we're going to have all of our fields wrapped in a form group. Okay, so we'll have form group and let's do a label. Don't need a four. We'll say title. Then we'll have an input with a type of text. And let's give it a name of title class of form control, which is just a bootstrap class and then a placeholder. Spell that right now. Placeholder will be title. OK, and then let's copy that form group. Paste it in. Now this is going to be the body. It's also going to be a text area, so I'm going to I'm going to replace input type with text area and that of course needs an ending tag and then that's going to be the body name is also going to be body all right then we just need let's see we need a submit button so that's going to go right here we'll say button uh, let's give it a class let's see for the class we'll do btn and then btn primary Okay, we also want to make sure we give this a type of submit. All right, so let's save that, see what that looks like. Good. All right, so in the next video, we're going to add function to this form so that we can actually add a post through the application.